So we're talking tonight about communicating with inspiration. There was a guy named Glenn Cunningham. Glenn Cunningham lived in, in the um, early 1900s. In the 1930s, he was in college and he broke a lot of uh, running records. He was a long distance runner. Glenn C Cunningham lived in Kansas. And Glenn Cunningham was the, was the very first person on the planet to break the four and a half minute mile. Four minutes and 30 seconds. Later on, you have other people who broke the four-minute mile. But Glenn Cunningham was the very first person to break the four-and-one-half-minute mile. Four minutes and 30 seconds. He did it in four minutes, 28 seconds, and six-tenths of a second. He grew up in Kansas. He went to college in Kansas and ended up running for the United States Olympic team. The interesting thing about Glenn Cunningham was when he was seven years old, his schoolhouse in Kansas because of, uh, a, had a gasoline fire um, in which his brother lost his life, unfortunately, and he was burned on 90% of his legs. The doctors told him he would never walk again. He's seven years old. And Glenn Cunningham had a conviction in his heart that he wanted to run. God had made him fast, and so he wanted to run. So Glenn Cunningham spent the next 11 years of his life before college, all the way through junior high and high school, spent the next 11 years of his life running and exercising so that he could break the world record for the mile. And when he was in college, he actually broke four minutes and 30 seconds for somebody who was told he would never walk again. So I tell that story to say, you know, one of the most important things that we can communicate to other people is that anything is possible. When we communicate with inspiration, we're communicating that something is possible that we didn't think was possible. So tonight I wanna to talk about what it means to communicate with inspiration. And inspiration comes from conviction. What do we really believe? What do we really believe? Glenn Cunningham believed that he was created for a purpose. Conviction inspires us to act and speak. And Glenn Cunningham is a great example of that. And all of us have that in our life. All of us have something inside of us that inspires us. Now, this word, inspire, actually comes from a Latin word that we'll talk about in a minute. But a Latin word that means to breathe into. To breathe into to breathe life. This is what I love about Pastor Joel. When Pastor Joel Osteen uh, speaks from the, from the stage, from the pulpit, he will many times use this phrase. He'll say, when God breathes in your direction. What he's talking about is inspiration. When you are inspired by what God has put in your heart and a conviction that you have down deep, what it will do is it will propel you and it will propel those around you. See, the beautiful thing about leadership is this. In leadership, if I'm talking to you, I don't have to convince you of what I believe. My job in influencing somebody as a leader is I want to convince you that I believe what I believe. I want to convince you that I believe what I'm saying. And that's where the inspiration comes. So we're going to do an exercise here in just a minute. I want to encourage you, listen, my heart tonight is just to stir us, is just to stir our, like, our convictions deep down in our core. What do we truly believe? What do we believe about God? What do we believe about the world? And what do we believe about people? So we're going to do an exercise here in just a moment. And the first question I'm going to ask is, what do you believe about God? And I'm going to give you a couple of mine. I'm going to give you three things. So what I want us to do is write down three things. Now, here's the thing. I am willing, as a person, as a human being, I am willing to put together a leadership program that nobody comes to. I'm willing to write a book nobody will read. I'm willing to have a podcast nobody wants to listen to. Because deep down in my heart, there's conviction. And what I believe comes out of my life, same as you. What you truly believe inspires other people. It breathes life into what they believe. I don't have to convince you to believe what I believe. 
I have to convince you to believe what you believe and go for it. Y'all with me? Because you and I have different convictions. But the question is, do you truly believe that, that something is possible that you have in your heart? Do you truly believe that? And that's what leadership, when you, when you communicate from inspiration, that's what leadership does, is it stirs your heart, not for, not for the person who's speaking to you, not for their dreams, but for yours. So you're moved by when somebody says, I'm going to go for it, and I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to take a chance. I'm willing to take a risk. And I know every single person in this room and watching online, you are the same way. I know that you're willing to take a risk. When you don't see what's up ahead, your God knows what's up ahead. And you're willing to step out when God says, I want you to step out. That's inspiration. Because God breathes into you something that you believe with all of your heart is true and important. And you step out and you do it. You start a business. You work in a school. You work in the medical field. You have a family. Whatever it may be. You step out in faith, trusting God. Why? Because it's a conviction in your heart. And so we're going to talk about tonight communicating by inspiration. So the first thing we're going to do, I want you to write down three convictions. What do you believe about God? I'm going to give you mine very quickly. And those of you online, I'm going to give you two minutes here in just a moment. I'm going to share with you my three. Number one, I believe God is necessary. I believe God is necessary. What do I mean by that? This is, a, this is a philosophical argument for the existence of God outside of the scriptures. It's what we call necessary being. I believe everything in our world is contingent. All of the stuff that you see up here was contingent on somebody inventing it and making it. I was contingent on my parents having a relationship. They were contingent on their biological parents having a relationship. All, and, and so on and so forth backwards, okay? All that you see, everything you see, these chairs, these tables, everything in the room, this camera, all of it is contingent on having a creator. So everything in our world that we see was created by something or someone. I believe someone. But if you go back in the timeline of history of the universe, you cannot have an infinite number of contingencies backwards. You have to come to a being that is self-sufficient, all-powerful, perfectly good, and makes decisions. That's God. So for me, I believe that God is necessary. Why? Because everything in our world is contingent, but contingent things just don't happen out of nowhere. They have a creator. Y'all with me? That's number one. Number two, God is faithful. Y'all with me? God is faithful. He is faithful. He will do what he says he would do. Number three, God is able to do what we think is impossible. God is able to do what we think is impossible. These are my three convictions about who God is. When I talk to people about God, it's somewhere in the realm of these three things. This is what I talk about because this is what I believe about who he is. All right? So here's what I want to do. I want you to take two minutes. Those of you online, you're going to be with Ruby. And I want you to share... Um, three things, write down three things that you believe about God. Take two minutes now um, and go ahead and do that. Those of you online, go ahead and get with Ruby. Those of you in the room, go ahead and do it. Three things that you believe about God. Take two minutes. What I want to do right now is I want to ask anybody in the room if you would share with us maybe one thing, a conviction that you have and a belief that you have about God. Would be, somebody be willing to, to, to share with us very quickly? Go ahead. Well, can we, can we go on with the three things that we, we said? So I put God as strategic. God is on time, and God honors his word. Good. Love that. Love that. Anybody else want to share? What are your, what are your three things? I put that God is powerful. When I'm feeling down and out, I begin to call on him in prayer. Yeah. Then I begin to feel my strength, so I know it's the strength coming from him. It's good. Then I said that God is life. Yes, he is. Because we breathe, we move, and we live through him, so he is life. That's right. And the other one I said, that God is surely a provider. Because when you can't see which way you're going or where it's coming from, yeah. I look up and I'm like, Lord, where did this come from? So I know he provides for me through other people. That's right. That's good. Good, good, good. He does. Want to share? Um, I put that God is unlimited and infinite. Um, I put that... God created us to uh, create uh, or produce 
Good. and being fruitful um, to scale and to dominate um, as an extension of himself mm -hmm. in our lives. And then I believe that God's plan for us is far greater than what we could actually perceive for ourselves. Love that. Love that. Very good. I like that. Anybody else want to share? Want to share? We'll, we'll share online here in just a moment. We have our hand up? If you, if you don't mind, yeah, hold your hand up to Brad. Firm foundation. God is my firm foundation, and anything that you need to know is in the Word, in the Bible. And any way that you need to, any questions that you have, I Google them and I say, well, what does it say about anger? Then I get a scripture. Yeah. So there's a, it's just how to live. Firm foundation, a rock. That's good. That's good. Firm foundation, the rock. Anybody else on this side? I put that he is the creator, and it kind of goes back to Pastor Joel when he says, we come from God, but through our parents. That's right. But at the same point in time, God created us. So, and then I put that he's loving, regardless of whatever you're going through in life, God loves you no matter what. Sometimes you think you did something so bad that it's unforgiving, but he loves you regardless in spite of. And then the last one was he makes the impossible possible. Um, because every day for me is an exciting day. Uh, I get excited for what he does for me every day. I just, I'm overwhelmed some days because he does things that I don't even think about. That's right. And I get excited because I'm like, God, that was from you. I know you did that. I didn't do anything. So he does make the impossible possible. I love that. And I think you, to your point, he, here's where it goes from, here, here's where it goes from what we know about God to what we believe about God. Our personal experience with God changes what we think or know about him to what we believe about him. What, what I have experienced in life, when I, listen, before I had children, I would look at parents and go, dude, parent your kids right. And then I had my own children. And I was like, these parents are brilliant. All of you. Because you, I, don't, I didn't know what to do with a child until I experienced having my own child. And then I, would, I had all the lessons of people that would come back and go, you're going to learn how to barter with your kid. I'm like, barter with my kid? No way. And when they were three, I was like, we're making deals. We are wheeling and dealing with bedtime. Let me tell you. Because you do, you, ha you have certain experiences with God um, that before you have them, things are, let's be honest, knowledge things that we know about God. I can memorize, and I love memorizing the Bible, I know things about the Bible that I may not have ever experienced before. But when you experience something, it becomes conviction. When you experience, you're at the lowest point of your life, and you experience God coming through for you, it becomes a conviction, not just head knowledge. That's the inspiration. And I promise you, and I've said this before, but if I put the microphone in your hand and said, hey, I'm, I want you, I'm gonna give you a five minute warning, and you're gonna come up here, and you're gonna give a lecture for an hour on any topic. How many of you would say, you're gonna pick something you really believe and know? Why? Because it's conviction. It's a conviction. I used to say this all the time, and that we, we talked about it when, when Pastor Joel uh, was, young, was young in his career from 1999 to about 2003, 2004, they um, brought in uh, some new pastors. Pastor Craig got, um, got um, hired, and, and we were, they were talking with Pastor Joel about vision statement and mission statement. And at that point in time in the church, he's like, I, I, I really don't have like a plain vision statement, mission statement. It's always been hope. Hope is the vision of Lakewood Church. It is the mission. It's very simple. But they did something that was brilliant. They took Pastor Joel's messages, six months of his messages, and they went back and looked at all or listened to all of his messages for six months. And the same thread that was in every message started popping up because that's the conviction of his heart. And I use that as an example because we listen to him all together regularly. So what was, what was, it did not matter the topic 
that he was talking about. And if you listen to him or any other pastor or preacher or leader, whatever topic they start with, eventually they will get to what the conviction of their heart is in the message. Every time. They will say the same things every time. Why? Because it's the conviction of their heart. You have the same thing. As a leader, I don't care how many meetings you've run. I don't care how many gatherings you've led. At some point, what the conviction of your heart is, you're going to get to. And people will hear it. Y'all with me? That is the key to understanding what your beliefs and convictions are. All right, let's go online real quick to anybody online. Chris Durrett has it. So Tanya says, God is love. Good. He is good. He is faithful. Jacob says, merciful, graceful, peaceful. April, sovereign, love, he cares for me. And Heidi says, God loves me, he is faithful, and is always with me. That's good. That's good, I like that. See, we, we inspire others in spirit. We inspire others by what we truly believe. I can communicate from my head to you, and I'll reach your head. When I communicate from my spirit, it reaches your spirit. If I communicate from what my conviction and deep down is, there's inspiration in that for other people. They are inspired by what you truly believe. And your leadership, when you, when you begin to communicate in a way that you're really communicating deep down those convictions, it will move people. It will inspire people. And this is the Latin word. If you want to put it on the screen very quickly, this is the Latin word. The word is inspirare, which just simply means to breathe into. In English, it's to influence, move, or guide through divine or supernatural power. So that simply means this. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 16, the Bible was given to us by inspiration of God, it inspires in spirit. The Bible guides us, corrects us, equips us, edifies us, directs us, whatever we need. The scriptures give us in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 so that we would be equipped for every good work. So that we would be equipped. You can go to the next slide real quick. So we would be equipped for every good work. All scripture is God breathed. And so when we talk about inspiration, you ever been to an event, you ever watched something on TV, you ever heard somebody sing and go, I was so inspired. There's a different level that it hits in you as a human being. There's a different level that it hits from you just getting more knowledge. There's something that moves you. And it's, and it's you seeing something in somebody else that's almost powerful, if you want to use that word. And so that's why in, in leadership, communicating through inspiration, because we want to communicate to connect with people, right? That's what the last few weeks have been about, is communication is about connection with other people, and one of the deep ways that we do that is that we inspire. And when we speak from conviction, we will inspire others. All right, three convictions. Let's go with three convictions about the world. What do you believe about the world? What do you believe? I know this is a very broad question for all of you watching online. We're going to do two minutes here in just a minute. These are mine. What do you believe about the world? These are my three. Number one, I believe, this is my personal, I believe the truth is the most loving thing you can give someone. Number two, talent is the least important factor in someone being great. That's my personal conviction. We put a lot of emphasis on talent. I believe that talent is important in a very small measure. But I think it's the least important factor in someone being great. And then number three, daily discipline over momentary motivation all day. Motivation, many times we go, I'm, I don't feel motivated to go to the gym. I don't feel motivated to do this. I don't feel motivated to do that. My personal belief is that discipline comes long before motivation. Because when we're disciplined, we override the lack of motivation. Well, I don't feel like it. Well. You know, things in life, man, there are a lot of things I don't feel like doing. I didn't feel like, when my babies were two weeks old, I didn't feel like getting up at 2.30 a.m. in the morning with them and rock them to sleep. Because I'm tired. You all with me? Because I'm tired. But you do it. Why? Because that's what they need. So, 
I believe these are my three about the world. Um, and so I'm going to put it to you. Let's take two minutes right now. What do you believe about the world? What do you believe about anything in the world? How do you see the world? How do you see society? How do you see uh, things in your own world? Let's take two minutes and write down three convictions of your own heart about the world. Uh, anybody in the room want to want to share with us what are your three maybe maybe your own personal beliefs convictions that you have about the world that you see can be anything i know it's a broad question but anything that you see over here and then we'll get miles in the back hi good evening hello um i really only had two i couldn't think of a third sorry no worries um one you can't make everyone happy mm. just it doesn't matter you just cannot please everybody so don't worry or stress about it um and then mine like pretty much what i live by is always be truthful because the truth never changes and you can never remember the lies so if you're just truthful you don't have to think what did i say who did i say it so if you're always truthful it never changes so it's good that's good i like that So three that I wrote, you never fail if you don't quit. Consistency is key, and people are inherently seeking good. Good. I like that. I like that. Right here, and then we'll come back. I said um, it is beautiful to work together towards mutual greatness. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be scary when we lose hope or guidance, and it's perfectly created for us. I like it. Okay, um, I said delayed gratification leads to success. Uh, being right is overrated and peace is underrated. That is so true. <laughs> that is so true. You can, you can be right and lose the argument and lose the relationship. So true. Go for it. So um, I've got there is beauty in every struggle. Um, comparison is the thief of joy. Yep. And uh, this one's a little bit more specific. Um, we should, because it's so big in today's day and age, we should use social media more, but let it use us less. Oh, that's good. Let social media use us less and use it more. I like it. I like it. Anybody over here? Anybody over here want to share your three? Okay. Uh, our first one is uh, we are free to choose between, excuse me, between good and evil. We're and uh, my second one is we will ultimately be judged and held accountable for our actions and intentions within our heart. That's good. And um, number three, I put uh, there will always be strife and division in the world. That's true. That's true. You just quoted Romans 2. <laughs> That's so true. We will give an account to God, our creator. Anybody else? Convictions. All right. Right up here. And then we're going to go online with Chris Durrett. Okay. So this is um, what I believe about the world now is that people are led by fear now more than ever, mm -hmm. um, in my opinion. I feel like the world needs a hug, number two. And um, number three, I feel like there's still time. That's good. There's still time. Still time. Can I press into that real quick? If you don't mind me asking, still time for what? there to be significant change because there's, you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now. Yeah. Um, a lot of conflict, a lot of difference of opinion. Yeah. And I just feel like if we just take some time and just kind of listen to understand and not always, I think one of the classes you said, not always, you know, want to be right, but sometimes you just need to listen and just um, yeah. value other people's opinions. There's still time to make a change and, you know, everyone get on the right track. Let's go. I like it. You know, one of, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes in the whole world is, it's never too late to be what we might have been. Never too late to be what we might have been. All right, Chris Durrett, go ahead and share with us, man. What's going on in the chats? So Carla shared, the world is dem waiting for authentic leadership, le demonstrating God's love and true heart. Juanita said she believes that God never made ugly hearts. This world is good. It's the things that happens that makes it wrong. JC believes God is 
bringing the world back to order, peaceful place in the world. There are good and bad people in the world. Beautiful person is beautiful in their soul. It's good. And Eartha believes that there is good in the world, the world is always changing, and the world is full of opportunities for growth. I love that. I love that. Y'all give a hand to everybody online tonight. Thank you. If you're watching online, we just want to say you are our extended family, and we're, we're glad that you're here and, and sharing with us as we're sitting in the room connecting together. Uh, we're glad that you're connecting online. And one of the things I want to say is all the time is something that Pastor Nick Nielsen says a lot is he never likes to speak from anything he hasn't lived or experienced himself. And Pastor Joel will say a lot the same thing. I know Ms. Victoria says a lot the same thing. And I think that's really important for us. I think it's okay to speak on things that we, that we know or that we've learned, but we haven't always lived out. But I think for the vast majority of our communication, when we're talking about inspiring people in leadership, we speak from the things that we've experienced. That's why stories are so powerful in life. Your story is powerful. Why? Because you have a lived experience that you can convey conviction to other people. You can con convey the goodness of God. You can convey the goodness of people when we choose to live rightly before God with one another. There are still great people in the world, are there not? Um, you can use social media for great reasons, not just divisiveness, not just anger. So I think for us, when we communicate with inspiration, what's happening is, and go with me for a second, the same life and spirit that God breathed into us, we can, we're not God, but we can breathe in life into other people, can we not? You ever, you ever had a moment where somebody came to you and you were in a, in a dark place or a down moment and somebody came to you and breathed life? They said one thing to you and it changed everything. They motivated you with one sentence. They said one thing to you. You ever had that? So have I. And I remember those moments in life. Those are the moments that were imprinted on my soul. Those were the ones that were imprinted on my spirit where I went, I want to be like that person. I want to speak life into somebody else. I want to use my words and my actions for good for somebody else. Why? Because I want them to be inspired, not by me, but by the God that I live for. Because he is the one. So for all of us, I think communicating from our conviction, what do we truly believe? And here's my question. What do we believe is possible? See, um, if you'll put the next slide up, Abner, Pastor Abner. Um, management is about persuading people to do things they don't want to do. Leadership is about inspiring people to do things they never thought they could do. Management is about getting a group of people to do things many times they don't want to do, some things they do want to do to accomplish a goal. That's great. But leadership is inspiring people to dream outside of what they thought was possible. And it takes one person in your world and in my world to inspire us to believe bigger. To go, is this possible? Can we do this? Can Glenn Cunningham, who was told by doctors that he would never walk at seven years old, could he break the four and a half minute mile? Somebody told him he could. Somebody said, you can do this. Somebody inspired a boy in first or second grade that was so badly hurt, he didn't even know if he'd be able to get up on his feet. Somebody inspired that young man to do that. And somebody inspired you to do what you're doing today. Somebody pointed you in a direction that you may not have thought was possible. And I think for us, this is the essence of communicating in leadership. All that we've learned the last three or four weeks in the class is how do we communicate to connect? And I think one of the most important foundations of connecting with another human being is to convey spirit to spirit, is to convey heart to heart, is to inspire them by what you believe is possible. And many times, let's be honest, many times we can see in other people what they cannot see in themselves. You want to lead people? You want to inspire other people? Call out greatness in them that they can't see. 
Here's the beautiful thing about it. Many times we as humans, we do this. We can believe for other people what many times we, we can't believe for ourselves. Y'all with me? Sometimes the, the greatest challenge, listen, the greatest challenge I have in my life is convincing myself that God is the way he is, who he is. Man, people come to me and they go, Pastor, would you pray for me? And I'm like, absolutely, 100%. Let's talk about what God can do. And then the enemy comes in with my own challenges, and he's like, can God really do it? And I think that's what inspires. I think that's what in spirit breathes life into somebody else, is when we are able to verbally call that out. And so when we communicate, we communicate with conviction. We can communicate with conviction. I'll be honest with you. When we started the, Le the Lakewood Leadership Program, I didn't know if 10 people would show. I didn't know if 10 people would care about Tuesday nights, Thursday nights. I didn't, I didn't know if anybody would care. But I was willing because I believe what we're talking about is vital and important. My personal conviction, not because I have all the answers and not because I've lived all the experiences, but it's because I have seen what God can do with people who step out and go, I think I can do it. I've seen what God can do when we put our confidence in who he is and who he's created us to be. And I think it just takes us willing to say, I'm going to take a chance. That's inspiration. People are inspired when you breathe that into their life. And li listen to me, no other time in our society's history is it probably more important to breathe life into somebody than right now. People are struggling. People are hurting. Many people are in dark places. Many of us in this room have battled with it over the last few years. And let me tell you, you want to influence people? You want to lead other people? Breathe life into them. Tell them that something is possible that they thought was impossible. Breathe life, conviction of your heart. Tell them about the God who has orchestrated your life. Tell them about the God who is faithful in your world. And I promise you, they will see it for themselves. That's conviction. Speak from what you know to be true. I can have information here, but when I speak, I want to speak from here. I want to speak from that belief, that deep down well of, of understanding about who God is. And it's because we've experienced him. We've experienced God's goodness. Amen? All right. Let's talk about a couple of things. Uh, last thing we're going to do, let's answer a question very quickly. What do we believe about people? Let's take two minutes, our final one tonight. What do we believe about people? We talked about what we believe about God. What do we believe about the world as a whole? Now what do we believe about individual people? Take two minutes very quickly, and we're going to do that. Those of you online, be with Ruby. What do we believe about people? Because leadership is about people. It's about serving people. It's about influencing. So what do we believe about people? Sir. Okay. Anything is possible. That's good. We are the same, but really we're not. We all want to be loved. Say the last one real quick. We all want to be loved. We all want to be loved. Number one need of humans. That's good. That's good. Anybody else want to share very quickly, what do you believe about people? I did put what he put, that everybody wants to be loved, uh, that people can change, and that there is good in everyone. That's good. Good. Anybody else want to share very quickly? What are your three, what are your three convictions about people? I went a totally different way. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to hear this. I said that people can be very annoying. Okay. They can, they can be very stubborn. Yes. And they can be inconsiderate and selfish. I have run into... Why are you reading my diary? <laughs> Because in this world these days, everybody is for self, you know? 
And that's why it's so much disturbance, uh, turbulence, I'll say, in the yes. world. Because there's selfishness. And there is no one that the people don't, don't, they don't know God, so they can't have love because they don't know what love is. So true. So then I put also that people, oh, Lord, they can be very predictable, too. I Sorry. can... I can almost discern what you're gonna, what you're gonna do, mm -hmm. and I read this in the book that Abraham Lincoln went to church, and he was listening to the preacher, and so after the sermon, the guy said it was a good sermon, but Abraham Lincoln said no, he said because good communicators ex have high expectations yes, of their listeners. That's right. So when I be listening to you. I have, I know, I said, does he have high expectation of me? Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to comprehend what he's talking about. But he's going so fast, I can't keep up sometimes, you know. But anyway, I just want to say people are, people are loved. Right. And we should love. But in this world these days, you can't look at what the world is doing. We have to That's look right. at what God wants us to do. That's so good. And this is why we're here. Thank you. You're reading my notes, by the way. <laughs> This is why, this is why, just a second, Brent. This is why we're, this is why we're here. And what you, what you were talking about, I think, is a great point. I think the reason that we're talking about how to lead in the world, how to influence, how to make our mark, how to be a light to other people, is because so much of the world can be what you were talking about. People want to be inspired. People want to be propelled People want to look at, at people and see something different than what maybe they are around all the time. And those of us as believers that have the light on the inside of us, that's what we get to be. I love that. And I do have high expectations, by the way. I do have high expectations. A little, a little high sometimes, but I do, yes. I believe that people are basically good and kind and have a natural tendency to help others. Two, I believe uh, in a right care that people who are in need can turn to someone and ask for help. Yeah. And third, I believe people are all born selfish, but they can change that into being selfless. That's good. That's good. All right, one more. One more. One more, very quickly, right here. Thank you, Mr. Brad. Um, I put that people are God's creation and best when operating in according to his design. Uh, people are spiritual beings experiencing life from a human perspective. That's right. And people are uniquely designed to have value for a purpose. That's great. That's great. We are uniquely designed for value. Yes. Yes. Mr. Brad, we have one more right here at this, at this back table. Thank you, Mr. Abel. I think people use words as like a spell. Like you can say anything to make a person believe something. Mm -hmm. I think it goes to what you were saying. If you really believe something, a person will like be inspired by it. Like, yeah. Even you on the stage, like you talking. I, I'm not saying like it's witchcraft or anything, but it's a spell. Like we believe certain things now coming out of this because of what we heard, just off your body language and what you're saying. That's right. Yeah. Um, I think people, what you said too, people are born selfish, but they can learn to be selfless. Right. Uh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. I think, I think it's so important for us. I think what you were talking about is so good is that words do have power, don't they? Words do have power. And I think just like what you were talking about, and what some of y'all have said about selfishness, many times selfishness, selfishness, the example of selfishness is, is shown in the words that we use with other humans. Instead of inspiring and lifting and, and loving and lifting people, we pull them down, we push them down, we break them down, don't we? And God's calling us to the offices to say, no, build up, equip, uh, bring life with those things. All right, Chris Durrett. All right. Natasha says she believes that people are made in the image of God. Dr. Dokes believes that they are good people that have been hurt, but that they're looking for hope. Chris Lee says that people have potential. People are like a bouquet. No one is the same. People are unique and should be treated with respect. It's good. Alice says that people need encouragement. They need to know Jesus as a savior, and they need to know that someone cares. And Ruby believes that people can be encouraging and lift others up. 
I love it. That's so good. I think what we believe about people, what we believe about God and about the world and about people, it is the filter that we use every single day in leadership and in life. What we truly believe, I think somebody said value. There is value in every person. If we truly believe that, it will affect the way that we treat and talk to people, won't it? It will affect the way that we lead. It will affect the way that we influence and inspire other people. It will always affect because we believe certain things about that person, which means we believe that about us. We believe that about us. So let's go through a couple of things very quickly. This is the inspiration equation. Again, the PowerPoint notes are on Church Center if you need them. Um, but inspiration equation from the book is what they know, what they see, and what they feel. What people know, what they see, and what they feel is the inspiration equation. So if you want to take it from a perspective of what does it mean to inspire? Well, the words that we use, the actions that we live out, and the feelings that we convey to someone else. What do they feel? We're going to go through these very quickly. We just have a few minutes left. There's a couple of, uh, there's a couple of words that I want to show us tonight. You may have heard these before. There's three distinct words, pathos, logos, and ethos. Pathos, I hear a lot of uh, con confirmation that you've heard it before. Pathos, logos, ethos. This is one of the basic things in leadership that we talk about a lot. Um, pathos is the word for empathy. Do you care about me? People are asking three questions when you lead them. If they're under your leadership, they're asking three questions in their soul, whether they know it or not. They're asking three questions. Number one, pathos is the word for empathy. Do you care about me? You can communicate through your conviction that you care about other people, genuinely. Number two, Logos is where we get the word logical. Do you know what you're talking about? Do you know what you're talking about? People can tell if you know what you're talking about through conviction and belief. And number three, ethos or ethical means can I trust you? Can I trust you? In leadership, these are the three foundational questions Every single person is asking when you're communicating to them, whether verbally or non-verbally, they're asking the question, can I trust you? Do you care about me? And do you know what you're talking about? And I think the more that we can answer these questions, both verbally and non-verbally, it will solidify people's trust. And without trust, there is no influence. There is no leadership. People want to trust. So these three words are powerful and important. Empathy, pathos and empathy, logos and logical, ethos and ethical. As we keep going, people need to know. So there's three things, the inspiration equation, what they know, what they see, and what they feel. Number one, people need to know that you have high expectations of them. You stole my notes, by the way. People need to know that you have high expectations of them. I do. I want to communicate that. I, we had this saying, and I, I got a buddy back here, Miles, who's a basketball coach. And I know Brad played the NBA and played in Spain. I always used to tell my players, I coached high school back, basketball for almost a decade, and I used to tell my players, if I ever stop coaching you, be scared. Because I feel like you've met your, your potential. Because players would come to me and coach, you're always getting on to me. And I'm like, yes, because you're going to be great. And I'm going to push you there. <laughs> we will go there together. But I never, want, I never want a kid to come to me when I was a high school basketball coach. I never wanted a kid to come to me and go, Coach, I wish you would coach me more. I never wanted a kid to beg for that. Because that, what that communicates is, I don't think this kid has it. I'm going to leave them alone. They've met their potential. 
I want them to know I have high expectations. Now, in my, we talked about strengths. We went through the strengths finder. One of my top five strengths is developers, number four. I have to be very careful with it. And this, I'm just using myself as an example. I have to be very careful with it because developer means I'm constantly saying, okay, I'm constantly raising the bar. How it can come across. The bad side of this is how it comes across is it's never enough. I have to be careful with that. As a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a leader, as a pastor, I have to be careful with that. But the point is, I never, ever want you to question if I have high expectation for you. Because, let's be honest, if I have leaders and I have my whole life, even leaders here at Lakewood Church, longtime pastors and friends, I want to know that they have high expectation for me. That is the ultimate compliment. I expect more out of you. Not in a negative way, but in of like, I believe in you. That's what that communicates, right? I believe in you, and I expect greatness. Okay, we'll keep moving. People need to see your conviction. People need to see your conviction. People need to visually see your conviction. They need to see it. The demonstration. Great, te uh, g uh, mediocre teachers say it with their mouth, okay? Good teachers will have illustrations and examples. Great teachers will demonstrate what they're talking about. They will live it out. So as a leader, live your convictions. Live your convictions. Now, here's what I'll say. A lot of times we hear it in leadership, people go, live in such a way that you don't need words. I'm like, that's awesome, and I agree with that, but you need both. You have to say it and do it. You have to say it and do it in leadership. Whatever your conviction is, whatever your team is, whatever your leadership, whatever your company, your family, whatever it is, demonstrate it and talk about it, because leadership is visual and verbal. It is visual and verbal. But people need to see your convictions. Okay, next one. People need to see your credibility. People need to see your credibility. And I, and I thought about it tonight, and I was like, man, what's, what's one simple way that we can show credibility? You know, what, you know what one of the best ways to show credibility is? Abner, you can go to the next slide. Is give people credit. When you give credit to other people in your family, your team, your work, your whatever it may be, when you give credit to other people, there's credibility that's built. It's a great, simple way to build credibility. It's to say, I didn't get here on my own. This person did this part of the project. They, they led this class. They led this you know, project we were doing, this assignment we were doing. They... they, they they were great. Give credibility away. Always give it away. And I think that builds, um, when you give credit to other people, it builds credibility. So people need to know that you have high expectations of them. People need to see your convictions and people need to see your credibility. And then finally, do you understand the person to whom you're speaking? Do they feel understood? He said it earlier, people want to be loved and understood. Two greatest needs of human beings, to be loved and to be understood. To be loved and to be understood. When you and I show conviction that we care about them understanding, that we take time to listen and understand who we're communicating with, Somebody on our team, somebody in our family, somebody we work with, somebody who's an employee, somebody who's a friend, somebody who's in our small group at church, whatever it may be, when we take time to understand them, they will receive what we have to say. You ever, you ever sat and listened to a, a great communicator and walked away and you say this, I felt like they were talking right to me. Great communicators make you feel like you're the only person in the room that they're talking to. And I think in leadership, when you're able to do that, what you're saying to that person is you don't have to know their entire life story. 
but, but they go, man, I feel like this person understood right where I was. And I think the more that we can do that, it builds credibility. And I think it helps to open people's hearts and minds to the convictions of our own hearts and minds. Do they feel understood? So what people know, do they know that you have high expectations for them? And one of my favorite phrases in all of leadership is this, and I'm, I'm just going to lay it out there for everybody watching online and everybody in the room. Do not patronize people. Truly have expectation for them. Never patronize people. Never talk down to them. Never, never put them in a position where they feel like, you know, they're not really meeting expectations. They're not really, you don't really have any belief about them. You don't have any expectation for their life. You're just kind of going along to get along. The most respectful thing you can do for another human being is truly say, I believe in you. And I have expectation for you. That's number one. What do they know? What do they see? Do they see your conviction? Do they see your conviction in how you demonstrate it? Do they hear it in your words and do they see it in your actions? What do you truly believe your convictions? Let me tell you, that speaks to people in leadership. And then number three, um, what do they feel? Do they feel, and this is the last thing, do they feel your gratitude? Do they feel your gratitude? Do they feel your gratitude? And I just wanna say, can I, can I be honest? I'll, a moment of vulnerability. Tara and I sat uh, the middle of last year, and I've been a pastor for the better part of 20 years, and I, I, I've, done, I've done leadership in many ways, but I haven't spent a lot of time coaching leadership. I haven't spent a lot of time doing this, and what Dr. Dokes does, by the way, Dr. Dokes is watching, what Brad does, what other great leaders, those of you in this room, you're professionals. I, if I'm being honest, there was a genuine part of me when we first started this that I was like, do I have any idea what we're doing? And I asked the question, do I have what it takes? All of us, all of us as human beings asked that question at some point. Do I have what it takes? And we sat and talked, and, and I, told, I told my wife, I told Tara, I said, I said, you know, I don't know, but we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. And my prayer is, is that this would be valuable to anybody who would show, that this would be valuable to all of you, that you would take time. And I, and I hope that you understand, when I say we're grateful for you, I genuinely mean the gratitude in my heart that people would watch online from around the world and that you would show up on Thursday nights and be a part of this is a massive thing. Why? Because I believe in my heart that this is valuable. Not because this is my knowledge, but this is stuff that's been given to me for years and I've read in books and other people, Dr. Dokes and People have been invested in me and I wanna give it all away to people and I wanna give all the knowledge that we have and I want us to build one another together. But there was a part of me that I was like, man, I'm just grateful if one person shows up. And so the gratitude that I feel for all of you, I hope that you feel that, that we're grateful that you are a part of this program. And my heart is, is that we would all go give this all away to others. That wherever you are, that people would sense the, the, the influence and the gratitude that you have for them. So what do they know? What do they see? What do they feel? Do they know that you have expectation? Do they see your conviction? Do they feel your gratitude? And let me tell you, the gratitude piece goes a long way in, in life and in leadership. When people know that you're grateful for them, it changes the whole game. So we just want to say we love you genuinely. We're glad that you're here and that you're our church family, all of you watching around the world. We're grateful for you. And I know we're over 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pray. But I want to finish with that tonight, gratitude. So let's do this. When we communicate, let's communicate from our convictions. Okay? Head knowledge becomes conviction when we have an experience, when we've truly experienced those things. So, final thing that I would impress on you as a leader, make sure when we communicate, let's be the people who communicate more from experience than we do just from head knowledge. Because your conviction comes from your life 
experience. And you've experienced the goodness of God. You've experienced all of these things. And as we communicate to other human beings, we will influence when they know, I can, man, you've been through this. I know that this is true. Cool? Let's do it. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you that you are good to us. We thank you, God, that you have inspired us. We thank you that you've breathed in our direction and that you're continuing to do that. And Father, as we leave here tonight, finishing our final week of this class and looking forward to the future ones, we thank you that you are continuing to train us and develop us inside and out. And as we communicate to connect with other people, Father, remind us of the convictions that we have in our heart. Help us to keep it at the forefront of our mind every single day. And God, we're grateful. We're grateful for the influence that you've given. We're grateful for it. And Father, we want to bless other humans. We want to help their lives. We want to, we want to be a blessing to all people. We want to be good stewards of what you've given to us, our gifts, and our talents. We want to be good parents. We want to be good spouses. And we want to be good friends and employers and employees. And we want to be good teachers and medical professionals and father we want to be good um, agents of your leadership in every way in jesus name amen amen um thank you we want to remind you uh two weeks from tonight july 13th we'll be right here class 105 we're going to start on core values uh, but this week i want to challenge you i want to challenge you um maybe once or twice or three times this week when you get up in the morning think about somebody you could text and be grateful for Tell them, be specific. And then, and then uh, also, I would say write down, as your mind comes to the place where you're thinking about your own convictions, write them down. What do I truly believe about my life, about the world, about God, about the things around me? What do I truly believe? The more you can take notes, the more you rehearse the convictions that God has put in your heart. We love you guys. We'll see you two weeks on Thursday night right here at 7 o'clock.